there there viewers my name is Cliff and welcome to my channel called Vintage Time. In this episode of how to cut gemstones it's obvious from the introduction that this is going to be a disaster video and as you can see from this little number I'm holding here a rhodolite garnet from the Umba River in Africa this little baby has caused me nothing but grief. Now, due to public demand, quite a few of my viewers said, hey, we'd love to see a disaster video of where things can go wrong. Now, everything looks perfectly natural in this gem. It looks clean, unincluded. However, that is not what happened in this video. And I'll drop in some photos, and this gem is all gemmed up, and there's nothing to be seen in the stone. Anyway, let's get on to the disaster epic video of where things can go wrong in cutting gems. So things start off pretty typically as I've got the gem in the transfer jig once again waiting for it to be glued to the top stick overnight and I've got it orientated in a certain way because I'm thinking to myself I'd like to cut a Marco Voltolini cut. He's one of my favourite gem designers. So everything's set up waiting to go. I'll drop in a photo of the design that I'm going to cut from him. So I saw a couple of photos of this design and how it looked like and here we have the garnet and the particular cut and here's a piece of citrine of the design and I was pretty confident I didn't even preform the gem and you know I just set up the angles on the fastening machine and got ready to cut. So as you can see from the previous scene that I've got my index wheel all color coded and fortunately with this design it matches up with one of the color codes so you can see that I'm just whizzing through the facets real quick because it's just a case of lining up the color on the index wheel I don't even have to look at a number so things are going pretty nice and smoothly however things were going to change very shortly. So I've been cutting the pavilion with a 240 grit disc and you're probably thinking to yourself gee it's looking a little bit shabby around the edges. Well just remember I didn't preform this particular gem I just centered it and put it straight on the top but I feel very confident with my fastening skills that I don't need to preform all the time. So I'm going to go about the process of cutting the girdle. So I've got the fastening machine set up at 90 degrees getting ready to cut the girdle and here I'm just setting up, lowering the mast of my fastening machine, cutting the particular girdle down to depth. As a side note, you'll get good enough sometimes just to put the stone straight on the dock without even having to do a preform. And if you can understand how to orientate a stone, it sometimes will save you a little bit of time also. Anyway, here we see the actual stone has taken shape from that shabby outline you saw before but you also start to see some of the inclusions as you look through the pavilion into the crown section. So here you see me polishing the pavilion and the girdle outline and this will give me a better idea of what's going on with the inclusions. So I've transferred the actual gem onto the pavilion side so I can cut the crown. Just having a close look just in natural daylight and the stone is a lot darker. It still reveals kind of bubbly inclusions but I'm still willing to keep going on to see what happens as I'm prepared to cut down to depth to cut a fairly thin girdle so I'm confident that a lot of the inclusions will just be cut out. But we'll just see what happens. So I thought I'd just mention in this section of the video while I'm cutting the main crown facets is that my fastening machine doesn't have a depth gauge. In point of fact all my cutting is done by sight so I'm always looking at the stone and by hearing constantly listening to a tick tick sound of when I've finished cutting the actual facet to a depth. 
I don't even look at my adjuster on my mast. I just turn. My hand automatically just lowers or goes up. I pull out the loop. I'll look at facets for correct meet points, which is really important. But having a depth gauge, in my opinion, and LED readouts is a big waste of time. So as you can see, the stone is quite heavily included now, and you wouldn't have thought that it was that bad from the initial rough. So little bits are chipped out on the points there of the crown facets, but there's one major inclusion on the top to the side of the actual stone, and that would be a problem, but I'm still willing to cut the girdle lower because I've cut plenty of competition size girdles that are very thin, which only is about 5% of the entire stone. So I've got plenty of girdle line to go, but I'm not feeling very confident at this moment. So I've been using a pre-polished disc and I've been cutting down into more layers of the gem and cutting side facets and from a cutting point of view it's nothing wrong with the actual cutting it's looking pretty good but there's these inclusions and I'm getting into different layers of the stone all the time so sometimes you remove a couple of inclusions and as you get lower into stone by cutting off a few more step facets you'll encounter another inclusion then that will chip out a stone and then another one will chip out so this is starting to become a little bit frustrating and it's obvious that this stone even though I'm trying to keep working at cutting out inclusions more keep appearing So all the step facets have been cut on the sides and on the ends and I've cut the table but there is one inclusion that is still remaining and it's right on the top tier on the end step facet. So I've been polishing the table and as you can see that one inclusion that was on the top tier of the step facet on the side there has just dropped out. Let's do a little close up of the chip that just seemingly fell out of this gem. And I'd just like to say thank you for watching. And there's just one thing I'd like to say before I leave. And that's goodbye and...